Welcome to Stories of Resilience presented by Ortho Carolina. I'm here with two men who are very important to the Panthers franchise, Jake DeLome and the Panthers head team physician, Dr. Pat Connor. Thank you both for being here. Um, I, I'm excited to talk to you both about this because, um, you know, it's a, it's a comeback that not only shows Jake's resilience, but it really changed the narrative around quarterbacks and elbow injuries, what the two of you did together to get Jake back on the field uh, with the Tommy John surgery. So, so I'm, I'm excited that we get to have this conversation. I appreciate you both being here. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited about it. I, uh, I guess we're going to reminisce about it with, uh, with Dr. Connor and um, he wasn't just our doctor. He was, our, he was our friend still is our friend. So it's a, uh, it's, it's good to be able to uh, talk about this. And Dr. Connor, we appreciate your time as well. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure. So if we could go back to that, Jake, what do you remember about that game um, and that injury? Well, that game, it was the third game of the season um, in Atlanta. Um, and when I say the injury, listen, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. And maybe Pat might have known it also. I'm not sure. But like, I knew my elbow was going to pop at some point. I, I, th that just wasn't ever a, a question in my mind. I, uh, I started having some issues in 05, and it was bothering me a great deal. Washing my, shaking a hand, washing my face, brushing teeth, it, it just bothered me. And then 07, um, from the spring to the summer to camp, it just was one thing after another. And it, uh, it was on a probably a six- to eight-yard pass to Brad Hoover. Uh, it was a check down. And right, right then and there, my elbow went. And I just knew right away that it was a feeling I'd never felt before. And it went. Um, and I grabbed it, and I just kind of I went down on one knee. Um, and they came on the field, Ryan Vermillion, and, and Pat was right there. And I, and I looked at Doc, and I, and I said, it, it went. It, you know, it, I, I'd never felt that before in my life. I've never had one of those type of injuries. But I just told him, I said, it went. There's no doubt. It, 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 it popped. Well, I remember it. Uh, very uh, clearly, it's like it was yesterday. You know, the the the, uh, the background I think is important. Uh, and 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 what the pain he was having on the inside of his elbow were probably just little microscopic tears uh, to that tendon. When we when we went out there on the on the field, and he was down on one knee holding his arm. He knew what had happened. I knew what had happened. And uh, uh, the 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 one part we'll talk about, but the one part that was that was. Uh, different is most most throwers that'll have that injury they'll tear they'll tear the tendon uh, uh off the inside of their elbow but but jake he tore both the tendon and the ligament which is that tommy john ligament uh and so that's why his injury was uh was was at such a different level than 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 any others is that uh, it wasn't just the tendon but it was both dr Gunner, what was the research around that at the time what was the the common feeling if you had an injury like Jake's and you were a quarterback there had never been a quarterback in the history of the National Football League to have a Tommy John uh, uh, surgery the reconstruction of that ligament and come back and start as a as a starting quarterback in the league and uh, uh, I knew that and Jake knew that but but Jake had a he had a lot of gas in his tank at that point he he uh, he wasn't even close to uh, to call it a day. And so we talked about, it. I remember being on the sidelines. Uh, he's got his arm wrapped up. He's holding it. We're on the sidelines that game, standing over to the side. And we literally are counting backwards from next season uh, and, and talking about, okay, we're going to get home. We'll get the MRI. We'll talk about it. And, uh, you know, we can give it a little time, to, a little bit of time to see how it feels. But uh, we can't let this day pass without making a decision to have your surgery because you don't want the rehab to go into the next season. So that was his mindset. Doc, probably he knew the, the bigger picture. I was so narrow minded, I guess you could say. And I guess my mindset was, um, OK, the, I've never been hurt before. I've never had to kind of be away and I have to have this surgery. Nobody's had it. And to be quite honest, um, it, I knew not, not many quarterbacks that had the surgery and they'd come back from it. And so my mind's just kind of racing. So that day was kind of a, a blur for me. But the next morning when I went in and I was talking to Doc, I was like, my, I, don't, I don't hurt. My elbow doesn't hurt. Like, I slept last night. I didn't get up and had pain. Mm -hmm. And he said, because, he said, it finally ripped. He said, you don't have those nerve endings, uh, no nerve endings firing um, where it was partially torn. He said, I, I just, I felt good. 
Um, and then next thing you know, we have to decide on the surgery and, you know, everybody you'd hear the, uh, the, the name so-called, uh, the Dr. Andrews or, or, or Neil Elitros at the Curlin Joe clinic. And, and so I was, remember talking to my agent and he was like, Hey, we'll, we'll get you out on an opinion. We'll, we'll see somebody here. And I, and I just said, listen, I'm sorry. I said, Pat's doing my surgery. So Dr. Connor, as you get ready to, to go in and operate, what are those conversations that you're having about what this is going to look like and what the rehab is? I, I'm a big believer in, uh, uh, in, the, in the players uh, having the best possible treatment that they possibly can. And uh, if I didn't do this surgery and if, I, if, if it wasn't part of my specialty and, and, and what I do a lot of, I wouldn't have offered to do it uh, uh, for Jake. Uh, as much as I love him and as much as I, I'm happy to be a surgeon, I wouldn't have offered it had I not known that, uh, that it was in my wheelhouse. And, and I talked to him about that, and that's what we talked about. And, uh, uh, and he, he had the trust in, uh, in, in me to take care of him and, and, and Ryan to do his rehab, and, uh, and, and that went a long way. He said, this is not a debilitating surgery meaning you're not having a shoulder redone you're not have a, you know a rotator cuff it's not an acl he goes you're gonna be bored out your mind he said you're just gonna have to be patient and let it set because they were gonna fix you know graft uh, a new ligament in. he said you have to let it set i didn't know what to expect so we have the surgery and they were gonna take the, a piece of my left hamstring to make the ligament and i think you either take it from um whatever i don't know what you call this right here if you have it or not i don't have it or from your achilles or your hamstring so we took it from my left hamstring where i remember waking up and i'm in a sling maybe for a day or two not much the elbow does not hurt whatsoever my hamstring is killing me i'm like what is going on and I, that that's that's what hurt more than anything it was we had to we, we had to slow you down somehow jake you know that was that was well, the idea that's that's why that's why man i that knew it. it i knew it i, I gotta tell you a, a story so uh uh we come up on the first game of the season that next season and uh uh and jake's elbow in a lot of people's eyes is kind of a, a an old story because jake you look at him he's running around he's the same old jake uh and so we're out in san diego and we, we play the san diego chargers first game of the season and uh they kick off to us and you'll, you'll, you'll understand why I remember this so well. Uh, they kick off to us, kick it in the end zone. Okay, the team is out on the field. The defense is on the team. Jake's running out. The play clock is running. Jake stops in the middle of the field and turns around and runs over to me and puts his arm around me and gives me a hug and says, thanks, Doc. And he turned around and I said, get out of here. And he turned around and, uh, uh, and, and, and went back out there. And Jake... Was that the same game? So, so that was the beginning of the game. Yeah. But then, if I remember correctly, in your first game back, you couldn't have scripted it any better. Where you uh, throw the the game winning touchdown for a come from behind win, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the one where we had the lead, and Philip Rivers did some magic kind of late in the game, and <laughs> they took the lead on us, and we were able to go down. And um, I threw a touchdown pass to Dante Rosario, and I'll be honest with you. Thank gosh, Ryan Khalil gave me a high snap on that play because I had predetermined. We, we, you should not have scored on this play. I mean, they, they're all in the back, and I had an idea where I was going with the football. I was going to just look somewhere, and I was going to just drive it to, to somebody on the left, and Ryan gave me a snap a little high and away, and I lost vision. And uh, I, they protected well, and we scored. So it was as storybook as a storybook could be. Yeah, it, it definitely was very emotional after the game in the locker room, because I know for me, I, you know, that one of you want to prove a point that I can come back from this. But my thing was, I want to prove I want to prove a point to my team. They can trust and believe in me again. That we're going to find a way to win in the end. It was all about Jake, you know, what he had, what he had overcome and what he what he had done. And uh, it was really special because people were People were really happy that we won the game. You know, all the players were happy that we won the game, uh, but they were really happy for Jake as a person. And and and, and I remember the uh, the embrace that Jake and Ryan Vermillion had because those guys those guys spent way more time with each other than they did with their own wives over the course of the previous 12 months. And so uh, uh, it was really special. And uh, uh, and Jake, Jake never looked back. Uh, uh, he, he, he did great with his elbow. It, it became kind of a, a, 
a, a non-issue over, over time. But uh, that was really a special game at the start and at the finish. It's incredible that, you know, we're getting a chance to do several of these. And, you know, I think fans and and media myself included you you hear the name of uh, the injury right you see the injury and and you hear something like Tommy John and and to get to go into all of these stories that's just one day that's one flight to San Diego where all of these things were going on and so for over that uh, you know over the course of almost a year to get to hear how both of you remember it and how you handled it Jake um is just is really special um and it gives a, a lot of us an insight into into this game and into as you know we're calling this the stories of resilience that are happening all the time when you come back from these injuries so so thanks again to both of you this is incredible it's great. Well, thanks for having us. It always come, It's always nice to do this. There's no doubt. Yeah. Thanks, Chris and Jake. Great to see you as always, my friend. Same here, PC. Hope yeah, you're doing man. well. Yeah, great. Thanks.